Hey everyone, welcome to part 116 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll create submenus like this in our party screen. So this will allow us to select different actions on our selected Pokemon. And we'll be building this as a dynamic menu system that we can reuse in other features like Pokemon storage, inventory, etc. And by the way guys, I have a really awesome announcement to make. Our channel just crossed 10,000 subscribers. It has been a really awesome journey. I made 115 videos in the 2D Pokemon series and around 20 videos in the 3D Pokemon series on Patreon. So I just want to take this moment to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel. And I also want to say a special thanks to all the people who supported the channel on Patreon. I wouldn't be able to run this channel and make all these videos without your support. All right, so let's start the video. So let's start the implementation of the dynamic menu. So the reason I want to make this menu dynamic is because I want to be able to use it from different places. So in Pokemon games, we have menus like this in the party screen, in the boxes of the Pokemon storage, in the inventory, etc. Even in the party screen, the content of the menu will be different based on whether we opened it from the battle or from the free room, okay? So I want the contents of this menu to be fully dynamic. So just keep that in mind while we are implementing it. All right. So this dynamic menu is going to be pretty similar to our choice box. In our choice box, the choice is shown is completely dynamic, right? And we have a content size fitter here. So the size of this choice box will change dynamically based on the number of choices we have. Right, so if I was to add another choice here, you can see that the height will change dynamically. Right, so we want to create our dynamic menu like this. So let me go inside the UI canvas, and what I'll do is I'll just duplicate the choice box instead of creating our dynamic menu from scratch. All right, let me name this dynamic menu box okay and let me just enable it so here we don't want to use the choice text prefab let me just remove these two and I'll just unpack this prefab and I'll rename this to dynamic menu text okay and I'll just write something like item one over here. Okay. And we don't need the choice text here. Instead, we need the text slot because we are going to use the generic selector for the selection of the dynamic menu. Okay, so let me attach a text slot and let me assign the text as a reference. So this will be the text of the dynamic menu. All right, we can convert it into another prefab. So let me go inside the game folder and I'll drag and drop it into the UI folder. All right. So yeah, this is going to be our text. We can make a few duplicates to see how it looks. So next. Let's position the dynamic menu box properly. So I'll just disable the dialog box. And in most cases, the menu box is placed at the bottom right. So I'll just change the anchor to this. And let me just bring it down. Okay, that should be good. And we also have to remove the choice box text from here. Okay, and instead of this, we have to create a selection UI script for handling the selection in the dynamic menu box. All right, so in scripts inside UI, I'll create a new script called dynamic menu UI. Okay, so this will use our 
generic select ui so all we have to do is make this class inherit from the selection ui class okay and this will be a selection ui of text slot because that's what we are selecting all right so this is all you have to do and it will automatically handle the selection for us uh, by the way i just made a type over here so let me fix the spelling of dynamic okay so we can go ahead and attach it to the dynamic menu box all right so we have set up the ui and handled the selection of our dynamic menu box so next we have to implement a state for the dynamic menu so let me create a script for that i'll go inside the game states folder and in here i'll create a new state called dynamic menu state okay so this will be a state of game controller so let me make it inherit from the state class all right so in the state we'll get the items to show in the menu as the input and we have to create a dynamic menu with all those items right and then when the user selects an item from the menu we have to return from the state okay so the input of the state will be the list of items to show in the menu so here let me create a list of string and this will be the items to show in the menu so i'll just call it menu items okay and the output of the state will be the item that is selected so here i'll create an integer variable called selected item this will just return the index of the selected item okay and i'll make the setter of this private because there is no need to modify the output from outside this class okay and by the way i'll also make the selected item a nullable integer so that we can pass null if the player pressed back and did not select any item okay so these are our input and output and by the way i misspelled dynamic again there is something wrong with me today so let me just change it back all right so next let me make this a singleton so that we can access it from other classes so i'll create a public static instance all right and i'll cache the options to it from the awake okay so next i'll override the enter function of state and from this i'll cache a reference to the game controller okay and now from the enter function we have to create a dynamic menu ui with all the items passed in the input right so for each item passed in the input we have to instantiate the menu text prefab in the dynamic menu box okay so to do that first we need a reference to the dynamic menu ui and the menu text prefab so let me create serialized fields for both first i'll create a variable for the dynamic menu ui all right and next i'll create a reference for the dynamic menu text prefab so this one we can create it as text slot 
that'll be better than creating it as a game object because text slot is a thing that we need access to. Okay, so I'll just call this item text prefab. All right, and we have to instantiate this prefab for each item in this list right so from here i'll use a for each loop to loop through all the menu items passed in the input all right and for each item i'll instantiate the item text prefab and we have to instantiate it as a child of our dynamic mini UI. Right. So for the parent, I'll pass dynamic menu UI dot transform. Alright. And by the way, the reason why we're doing all this is because we want the content inside this menu to be completely dynamic. Alright. So this menu can have any number of items based on what's passed in the input of the state okay so we are instantiating a prefab for each menu item and we have to set the text of the instantiated item text prefab to this string the menu item so first let me store the reference of the instantiated prefab i'll just store this in a variable called item text slot and since this is a text slot we can easily set its text by calling the set text function okay and here i'll pass menu item for the string all right so next i also want to keep track of the list of text slots added so that we can pass it to our selection ui by calling the set items function and let the selection UI handle the selection between those text slots. Okay, so here I'll keep track of all the instantiated text slots. So let me create a list called item text slots. Okay, this will be a list of text slot and I'll add all the instantiated text slots into this list. Okay. So now we can call dynamic menu UI dot set items function and pass the list of text slots to it so that it can handle selection between those text slots. Okay. So here we are creating a item text prefab for each menu item passed and we are also passing it to the selection UI for handling selection. Okay. So there is one thing I want to do before I create these prefabs. So from here, I want to remove all the existing child objects of the dynamic menu UI before creating new ones. Okay. The reason is because we can have sample game objects like this which we added for testing or we can even have the game objects that we instantiated previously okay so before we instantiate again we have to destroy all the existing children of this game object okay so i'll use another for each loop to do that and i'll loop through all the child of the dynamic menu UI and I'll destroy each one. Okay, so this is pretty similar to what we did for the choice box, right? So, next, after creating the item text for the menu, we can go ahead and enable the dynamic menu UI game object and listen to its on selected and on back events and all. Okay, so first let me go ahead and enable the dynamic menu UI game object. 
all right and then i listen to its on selected event so when this event is fired i'll call a function called on item selected all right and then i'll also subscribe to the on back event so let's go ahead and create these functions all right so on item selected function needs an integer parameter which will give the index of the selected item okay and from here we can store it to our output variable and then just pop the state okay so let me do that all right so next let's implement the on back function so from here we can set the selected item to null because the player didn't make any selection and again we can call state machine dot pop to pop the state okay so next i'll write the exit function and from the exit function i'll disable the dynamic menu ui and unsubscribe from these events so let me just copy this and do the opposite of it okay and when we exit we also have to clear the items in the selection ui right we can do that by calling clear items function so let me do it from here okay so next i'll go ahead and override the execute function and from the execute function we just have to call dynamic menu ui dot handle update so that the selection is handled all right so this is all we have to do and now we should be able to use the state to create dynamic menus so let's try doing it from the party screen so from here when we select a pokemon from the party screen and if you're doing it from the free roam state then we can go ahead and show a dynamic menu all right so first let's set the input of the dynamic menu okay we want dynamic menu state not the ui and first let me set the input which is menu items so what all should we show in this menu so i'll show summary switch position and cancel okay so these are the options that will be shown in the menu when we open it from the free roam state summary will open the summary screen switch position will allow us to switch the positions of two pokemon and cancel will allow us to close the menu okay so after setting the input we can go ahead and push the dynamic menu state so here i want to use push and wait because i want to wait until a selection is made in this menu right but we won't be able to wait from this function because it's a normal function not a coroutine right so what we can do is we can move all this code into a coroutine so that we can wait for things to complete okay so over here i'll just create a coroutine called pokemon selected action all right and i'll move all this code into this coroutine okay and from here i'll just call that coroutine all right so we have few errors here since this is coroutine we can't use return 
instead we'll have to use yield break okay let me also change that over here and now we'll be able to use the push and wait function so let's push and wait for the dynamic menu state all right and i'll use yield return to make it wait and now once you're back from the menu state we can check the output and see which item the player selected okay so i'll check the value of the selected item which is the output of the state and if selected item is zero it means the user selected summary so in that case we have to open the summary screen okay we'll be implementing this later and otherwise if the selected item is one then that means switch position was selected okay again the implementation of this will be done later right now our goal is to set up the dynamic menu okay and otherwise if the selected item is cancelled or null then we don't have to do anything we can just break from the score routine by calling heal break okay so this is how we can create dynamic menus we can also do the same when we select a pokemon while we are in a battle but first let me test this and let me see if it works so i'll go to unity and here first we have to attach the dynamic menu state script all right and in here we have to assign the dynamic menu ui and the item text prefab okay so don't assign the prefab directly from here from the inspector instead you'll have to find the prefab from the project explorer and assign it okay so yeah that's all we have to do so let's just disable all these by default okay and now we can try testing this okay so let me go to the party screen and let me select a pokemon from here so it looks like we have an error let me see what's causing it okay so from here we have to destroy the game object not the transform so i think that should fix the issue all right let me try selecting a pokemon again and now you can see that this opened up our dynamic menu and we're able to change the selection in the dynamic menu thanks to our generic selector ui okay so right now we haven't done the implementation of what should happen when one of these options is selected from the menu we'll be doing that later but yeah you can see that our dynamic menu is working fine so next let's also add this nested menu when we select a pokemon from a battle so in the battle the menu items will be slightly different but let me just copy this code and paste it over here okay so in the case of battle the first menu item will be shift which is used for sending out the selected pokemon i'm just using the same menu items from the gen 3 all right so the summary is the second item in the menu in case of battle and the third one is cancel itself okay so here summary is the second item and the first item is shift which means to send out the pokemon okay so we can move this logic into here so this will be executed 
when shift is selected from the menu okay so yeah you can see how useful our dynamic menu is we can easily change the options that should be shown in the menu and we can perform different actions based on the selection okay so the good thing is we'll be able to reuse this for a lot more features like pokemon storage health items tossing items and all that okay so let's try testing this we can try selecting a pokemon from battle and see if the menu appears all right so let me start a battle real quick and from here i'll select pokemon and i'll try selecting a pokemon and yeah you can see that our dynamic menu appears okay and in this case if i select shift then we should call back our current pokemon and shift it with the pokemon that we selected okay so yeah we're done with the implementation of dynamic menus so the good thing is we'll be able to reuse this in a lot more features in the future so yeah i'll stop the video here and in the next video i'll implement the summary screen so if you found this video helpful please leave a like on it and consider subscribing you can also support this channel on patreon if you can afford it so thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video